it's back everyone, the 90 Jeep Wagoneer Limited, aka Cherokee. Never mind the police. Oh, that's just tourism. So look what we got here, we got the Bendix 9 brake system, which was a horrible, horrible de defect in design that they gave up on. I think it's a 9 or the 10 here. But it's a nitrogen filled ball from what I remember. Over here you have an electric pump, provides pressure instead of a brake booster. Uh, the company that I business that services them fails. Uh, pretty sure it just needs O-rings inside of it. And they make it sound like, oh, you can't fix them, but eh, I'm willing to bet there's probably something that could be done. But anyway, um, I need to look at this proportioning valve because I need to reuse, I believe you can reuse the proportioning valve. And it's a three outlet, one, two right there. And the one at the bottom, it looks like. Let's get some light on this thing. And so basically what you're going to do is I'm going to get a 95 Cherokee double diaphragm brake booster and master cylinder. I'm guessing it's going to come pretty far forward. This may have to come forward. Another thing I need to look at is the push rod for the brake switch and all that. You can see there's some pretty good light in this camera. Look at that. Uh, let's see, it has like a there's two different length push rods. And the switch it looks like it's built right into it. I think that's it right there. So it's not a big deal. You can shim the rod out. You don't have to cut it or anything. I've seen people cut them, but if you're, unless you're a really good welder, you'll be cutting a brake rod. I don't know what that is. But. So that's that. I'm going to order up some parts for that. And get this baby back in the shop. I'll show everybody how to do that because there's not a lot of video on that. People talk about it, but they will show doing it. All right. Okay, okay, today's the day. I'm gonna get started on the old Jeep here. Put all this into there. I'm told it'll fit um, without moving the box. This, I think, has to come forward maybe an inch or so. We'll figure that out. Uh, this is a Parts Geek brand new mess cylinder. Um, this is a rebuilt. Uh, booster, which hopefully they can't fuck that up. It's just a very simple device, but who knows. And a eBay proportioning valve. Went that route. I don't, I don't know. People say you need them. I don't see it, why there would be a difference between an ABS and a non-ABS proportioning valve. I could see if this had rear disc brakes, it's going to proportion a different amount. But, uh, and that's all they do proportions how much goes where and ABS is pulsating a million times a second that doesn't affect that but I could be wrong who do I know and everything you read the forums everything just regurgitates what somebody else read so you don't know you just don't know but this was uh like 50 bucks parts geek uh, Amazon uh, AutoZone or like a hundred and something I was like come on so we're gonna get the Battery disconnected, pump the pedal at least 50, 60 times, they say, to depressurize this crap or the pump, which this one probably doesn't work anyway, but definitely do that. Then I'm going to take the air box out, take that out, just get myself some working room. Uh, and then the next step, because we have light, that's good, we need to uh, get some um, PB blaster on all those fittings. All right, let's get this done. How about a little tripod action? Bring you guys along for the ride. So we're gonna go with a 12. That says 12. For our line wrench. Always use a line wrench. 
because anything else is going to strip it. I'll tell you that right now. Let's do it just for the master. I'm going to wait for the um, proportioning valve. These lines in the way too. Maybe I'll get this one too. And then uh, yeah, this, this is going easy because it's California too. I mean, that would be all rust in the East Coast, as we say, Midwest. And that's our line going to our pressure ball. I might just pull that to the side for now. But yeah, let me get, then I'll get this hose off the reservoir and pop these lines off. Keep the camera going. Just boring. I guess I could always do a montage. I could work on my fast forward skills. I put a rag down here too to catch any uh, brake fluid. Because you definitely do not want to get brake fluid on paint. If you don't know, that is very corrosive. Can I tell you about this? Yeah, this was. Uh, I think the G. I remember GM having this on some of their cars. I got in the biz in the '90s, early '90s. I want to say like a Caprice had this Bendix system, and then I think Buick Grand National so it was a turbo engine. They probably didn't make a lot of. Maybe the idea was the bat. They, they not make vacuum so turbo is that how that works but uh, yeah they always they always seem to fail uh, that was my texting not you guys don't check your phone go with the short side there we go Alright, I'm going to stop this for a sec. Alright, I'm taking you guys under the dash here at the brake pedal to show you right there. It's a 16 millimeter on the brake push rod and the switch. I'm going to get those off and then I'm going to work on the bolts. Uh, are the bolts on this side? I guess they are off of the booster and yeah, on the mass cylinders out front. Okay. All right. Uh, brake switch is off. I just misspoke under there. Of course, it's not the brake booster. There is no brake booster. But I didn't really have to do these uh, lines here. I could have done that all after the fact. I'm going to get the four bolts underneath and uh, take this whole unit out. I was in autopilot thinking I had to separate it. But no. I think all one unit. I got room to get it out of there. All right. So. Trying to go handheld for you. There's one of the bolts right there, dead center. It's a 15. Um, I recommend going deep socket, of course. Swivel, and I've got my impact here. The nice, fresh. I just why is this not autofocus? Come on now. I've got some fresh um, lithium batteries finally. So this will save you some turning because it just spins and spins and spins and takes forever. So four bolts. All right, I also lied. It was a 14 millimeter, four bolts. 15 got one of them off, but this sucker, sucker is uh, broke loose. There's a massive shit that comes with it. Wow. That line, like I said, like I said, I think I'm gonna have to get that out of there. Get some light on the subject at hand here. It's coming up, it's hitting these lines, which, no, they're all going with it, so. And that's my harness. Got the connector over here I should get off. For the anti-lock something or other. Um, I won't bore you with this. I'm going to play with this, see what else is holding this 
I just need to be manhandled. All right, I was able to lift it up and out a little bit, but the two brake lines on undo you. Uh, I'll gotta leave that there. Take this over here. Uh, da, 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 da. These two are going across the front of the thing, so it won't come forward. They'll, those are going to the proportion valve, it looks like. This back one's on 11. This one was the 13, 14, 13, yeah. So I'm going to try and just loosen those and bend them out of the way, and this should come out. And the middle line, of course. Silly me. The third line, yeah, is going over to maybe the right side. Like that. I think that's it. Maybe. Oh, this is all a computer for this mess mounted on the bottom of it. So we've got an electrical connector, but I should be able to get it past this. This and I think it's just the hose holding me up, hitting the uh, accelerator pedal cable. Should be able to just try. If I can get out a little further and get to all this stuff, yeah, yeah, get to all this crap a little easier. Um, yeah, she's out of the firewall. These lines over here. I'll just get a little PB on that hose. Maybe that hose. That hose. That looks like it might be a quick, something like a quick connect. No, it's, it's just threaded. Okay. Um, and then the, we have to lube up that harness too. Why not? Make it all easy. So I think if I, I try not to make a mess with brake fluid, so if I take that hose off, it's going to. Probably leak, but I'll just go ahead and do that. It's right there. Should I keep you guys on? Keep you guys on for the ride? Is this exciting or what? Um, did I go over? Yeah, this this is failed system. That's why I'm replacing it. I think I told you that. But the upgrade is a XJ uh, 9596 had a dual diaphragm master cylinder. I'm sorry, brake booster. It gives you a lot more braking. Not that you need it for this application, but guys usually put big tires. They want it. So I'm going to go with that. Dual diaphragm, regular mass cylinder, get rid of all the ABS, unfortunately. And I think that was fluid that. Yeah, we'll see. If she has any fluid in her. Yeah, a little bit. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get something to plug that up. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a mess. All right, now I'm just doing the high pressure uh, hydraulic line here. Is a 13. This is why you got to pump the brakes 50 times to relieve the pressure of this. So what is it? Run for pressure. It's up there. It's like power steering, 1500 PSI or something. Up. It's up there. It's up there. But um, this one is, you can even feel the line. The line is soft. So that's a one way you can tell there's no pressure in there. And this is part of the failure. So it's the other reason there's no pressure in there. All right. Look at my reservoir. I cap that off with a. Is that, in, is that in the frame? Did I move that? No, of course it isn't. Let's zoom back out. Yeah, yeah, that capped off. That was the reservoir. We should. I guess I could have drained the reservoir ahead of time. That would have made sense. And let's see. Is this just clipped? No, it's a bolt. Looks like a little seven millimeter bolt. Undo that, and we're free. Okay. Voila! Now, let's look at what we got here. We have 
microphone getting hung up on all the wrenches. So, comes out of our massive cylinder, goes to our mega boost system, would make sense. Uh, let's see. No, it goes to our proportioning valve. Interesting. So maybe that's why they're saying proportioning valve needs to be changed. So one line goes to the proportioning valve. And maybe out of the top. Sorry, I'm looking. And then from the top into the ABS unit. The second line comes out splits one into the ABS unit and the other one comes over to our proportioning valve and then our bottom one which is what usually rear brakes comes over and goes to the ABS unit and then the ABS unit is going to do its job of front left front right or whichever left right and rear so it goes through the proportioning valve first, which makes sense. It's proportioning how much fluid goes where. It's interesting how it splits, though. It comes out of this one here, which is the front first. Well, it depends on how this is set up inside. And it splits it. Interesting. Anyway, so maybe we'll use that proportioning valve I got. We got lines going down. Those are not compression unions, those are proper junctions. This is factory. This truck is all new, all original. So we got one line. This back back one. I'm so sorry for this shakiness. This front one on the it's going to my left front wheel here. This one's going down. I think so yeah, the rear brakes. And this one's coming up and over to the right brakes. I'll verify that, but it's probably what it is. All the fittings are the same except Yeah, the fatter ones are front brakes. So that must be No, yeah, it looks like it's going down to the front wheel. Now the pipes are the same. I guess the pipes are the same, but the fittings on some of these are different sizes. Anyway, we'll figure all this out. i got to clean up this brake fluid mess before it deteriorates anything. Uh, we'll check our length of push rod. Came out. And I'm going to swap over the switch. I think it's going to be the same. It said 95, 96, the length is the same. So if you get like a WJ Grand Cherokee, they had a different rod length, so you put a spacer in here. Um, and there's plenty of threads, so you can do that. But uh, yeah, not too bad. Would that take an hour? And am I going to keep all this crap in here? The harness and the pump over there? I don't know. We'll see. Might be good to take it out. Now to swap this switch over, there's a metal sleeve. You just push it through. Put a washer on the outside. I don't think it matters which way this was. And then the sleeve comes out. Like so. And the switch falls on the floor. Hopefully breaking. Because it's probably something you just can't pick up at the store like a normal everyday item. No, I'm sure it's fine. And then uh, put this stuff down. And then there's the sleeve that goes through there. Now this size, I believe, let's get our booster. Might need, yeah, this is where we're gonna do a little modification. Uh, this flat piece is needed that's what activates the switch. When you push on the brake, it click, 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 click. And that's your brake lights. Uh, so we have to round this out to fit that size. 
think somebody will measure that, but I think it's five eighths. Is that what we're saying? Um, and then I need to grind this flat spot right here. And you can see how thin it is, but it must be really good metal. And let's look at our length while we're here. Is it longer? It looks like it might be longer. I'm just eyeballing this at a shitty angle. Oh yeah, I'm a lot longer. So I need to shim. There's a plate. Some of them have a plate here. A uh, plate. They make a plate. They sell it. And maybe you can go to the junkyard, and that'll bring it back to what I need. Um, I'll probably make something out of. Um, a plate is better. People say put on washers, but then you're, if you do washers, your four points are now your, are now your pivot point or your bracing. It's better to have a plate because it uses the whole surface area. Uh, and being a brake system, uh, I think you would want that nice solid. So maybe I'll just get pieces of flat metal after I do some measuring. Let's get some road length for you while I'm here. I don't think these are adjustable. So let's take a look at that. Sometimes they're adjustable. Nah. Another thing you could do probably is swap them over. I wouldn't be surprised. This one looks a little more beefier though. Anyways, we want to go from the base to here. I'm thinking five and a half inches. And this one is almost six, five and three quarters. So yeah, we're just going to make up a five and a half we want, and this is five and three quarters. Well, maybe a little more. No, five and three quarters, yeah. So we just needed like a quarter inch shim of uh, We'll see, quarter inch shims, a nut, four nuts, or like I said, a bar would be better if we have that surface area. That's just my thinking. Up to you. Or go to the junkyard and get the plate. The plate is on, I think the WJ's at it, which is a Grand Cherokee. I don't know. That's what people say. All right, guys, that might wrap up today. I have to go got some stuff to do that is the start of this project and yeah hope some people find this useful helpful there are videos out there but they weren't you know they skip a lot of steps so I wanted to really dive into this maybe it's boring though <laughs> I don't know let me know you can like this comment subscribe please share it that's how we get things going and help each other out all right thanks